So some time ago, I was determined to make myself a social media counter. And I did it. And it worked out really well. And I think I discussed my progress before and shared the terrible code that I'd written. Well, I'd homebroomed the hell out of that thing. And I decided to update it for 2019. And what I did was I used a bunch of Brian Locke's libraries. He created one for Twitter and for YouTube, possibly Instagram as well. I can't remember. We'll look at the code and find out. But I implemented it. One thing I couldn't figure out was how to get the time. And then I decided, wouldn't it be great to implement a plus or minus to show you how many you'd had in the day? Well, Mr. Bean here has noticed that that count has gone down to 916. So I've lost every one of my Twitter followers. I mean, that is the direction my channel's probably going and all my other social media accounts. However, it's not correct. So I've still done something wrong in my code and I've not been able to figure it out just yet, but I still wanted to share this anyway. I'm sure one of you smart Alex out there will figure it out. Now this is running off an ESP-12 and it's driving in an e-ink display from Waveshare. It's the 1.54 inch version. Now I've done a video before on how to interact with those displays, the wiring required and, and what library you need to use. So I won't go into full levels of detail with that. We're just gonna take a little look at the code and see how you can maybe do this yourself. It's a 3D printed case, which I really like, um, but it, I did, it, did 3D print it pretty quickly. So it's fairly rough, which is why I've got a fairly low depth of field here. You can see the time is pulled in at the bottom there. Um, that says, what, six minutes past eight in the evening. It's now about half past eight since I filmed that. But I have been absolutely unable to find a way to pull in the time from those time servers, still showing the wrong Twitter thing. I don't know why it's happening. I've not been able to do it. I don't know if it's just me being an idiot or not, but I haven't been able to. So this is the code and largely I've left it very similar to the previous version, except for I've switched out all of my janky code, put some more janky code in and used some of Brian's libraries. Now in here, I've closed these, so collapsed them, but these are the graphics for the display. So you'll notice that I had YouTube icons, Instagram icon, uh, Twitter and all that. And they're stored here, but also my face appears on that screen and that is stored here. So it's a hell of a lot of data. Now, I'm going to keep those collapsed because I don't think we need them on there, but um, I'm just going to show you some of the, the things we've got. Actually, file system is unneeded now. Is that what that means? I think it is. Um, but we've got the GXEPD library. That's the one I'm using to communicate with the display. And uh, you have to specify things in a certain way to include the requisite parts of the library. I'm using some fonts here. They're from the Adafruit graphics library. They're also required if you need some smaller fonts that are sort of defined. And you do need that if you're gonna display numbers on such a small display. We've also got a lot of setup stuff here. So um, I'm in order to get the time, I'm using my own website. So I'm pulling a file from the server. Um, you also need your Twitter channel, you need your Instagram channel, and you need the channel ID for your YouTube uh, account if you have one. Um, you don't have to use all these different accounts, you can use whichever ones you want as long as you can find a way to interact with the API. You also need API keys. I know, crazy, right? They wouldn't just give these away in like a JSON file or whatever that they used to do, but now you have to interact with their API. However, I don't mind, that's fine. I've got various um, integers here and strings for holding some of the variables that we get back. Um, and I'm also inc including the libraries here. So we've got Instagram stats.h, we've got Twitter API and YouTube API. These are all available in the, uh, the sketch manage libraries area. Now, it's up to you how you decide you want to connect your device. So maybe you want to use an Ethernet device or maybe you want to use Wi-Fi, but I've chosen to go down a Wi-Fi manager route. Um, I was using Wi-Fi multi, I'm now not. Um, I think I've gotten rid of that now, but it's still here in the code. So, you know, told you it's a bit janky, a bit messy. Anyway, the way that I'm doing it, 
I'm using serial just to log some stuff so I can make sure it's all still happening, but I'm using the Wi-Fi manager so that I can move this around if I wanted to. I can take it to work and connect to the Wi-Fi there, or I can have it at home. Now it's not battery powered, it's plugged in via USB, but still quite fun. And USB is pretty ubiquitous, ubiquitous, that's a word that I can't say. Um, it's everywhere, isn't it? So you can always find a USB connection if you need one. However, this one sets itself up as social counter um, so that you can connect to it and it doesn't have a password, um, unless it does. I can't remember if I set one. Either way, you'll figure it out. Um, part of the, the YouTube library is to have a bearer token. I think that's the YouTube one. Um, but do look at the libraries. They're all on GitHub, so you can see the various setup for them. They've also got examples, so they'll help you figure out your options. So at the start of each loop, I zero out the temporary counters, and then I go and get my time. And so, I mean, you can go to that URL and get the time yourself, but I think it's local to me. So I think I've set it as GMT time, so that's what you always get. Then I return the time and store it in my string time return. Then we fly off and get Instagram stats for user. We also get Twitter stats for user, and then we do the YouTube call just here. So there's different methods for pulling in these, um, these bits of information, and there are some functions a bit further down. Next, there's a function called show face. That is when my face appears on the screen. And then I have a delay for one second, just so it's on the screen for a bit. Um, and I have that there so that I know that that value is about to change or that something's about to change. Now, I've just implemented this, so it doesn't really work very well and I haven't tested it fully, but um, display ink deck. So increment and decrement, I guess. Um, and then if that is false, it shows the sub count. Um, but if it's true, or if it's the opposite, or if it's null, I guess, um, it will show the increment and decrement, decrement. God, I can't speak today. Um, and if it's the first time this is run, so it's the very first time that it's picked up the stats, it will set those initial values so that we can track whether it's up or down. And then I'm just printing them out and delaying for five minutes. Now the show subs function is fairly specific to these uh, e-ink libraries really. Um, so I'm just drawing the bitmaps. In fact, no, this is the, it's it's based off the GX EPD, but actually this could be an LCD. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're just drawing colors and it. I've told it what display it's using, but it could be any any screen connected to this this kind of library. And we're printing all these things out, but the show increment and decrement one, they do a little calculation in the print line. So that's probably where I'm going wrong, but I haven't really figured it out yet. So temp followers minus the first tweet or twit number. And then it also shows the first time value. So that's when it, it first uh, recorded those values. And show face is just very similar. We've also got show interwebs and get the Instagram stats down here. So those are functions that come straight from the library. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to let you all have this and do what you like with it. Um, feel free to improve it and send it back to me. <laughs> it's a bit cheeky to ask that, isn't it? But um, I'm happy with the way it performs. I'm going to take out um, on my one. I'm just going to take out the part where it, it counts the change. It certainly has shown me that my YouTube subscriber count has gone down, but then I'm not really posting a lot of videos, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, Anyway, if you want to know more about it, do let me know. I'll pop the code and the link to the STL file, I guess, if I can find it, in the description so you can download it and play with it at your will. And if you have a 3D printer and access to one of those 1.54 inch displays, then you can have a go. All right, I will speak to you all soon.